Community hymn singing in remembrance of late 
Air Commander Muda Shiro. I want to thank the Lord for his wife, Mrs. Muda Shiro. You are welcome. And also, we welcome our dear father in the Lord, Papa Odubogun. You are welcome. God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. We will now have the opening prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father Almighty, hearts and words are not enough to say how grateful we are for making it possible for us to see today. Most especially in remembrance of our Father who departed, who it pleased you to call home. We are doing this to honor you in his life, even when he's gone. I pray, Father, as we gather at your feet this evening to sing, may you accept our songs in Jesus' name. Accept our worships in Jesus' name. Accept our hearts as we sing to you in Jesus' name. Please, Father, in return, bless us. Bless us. Take care of our needs as we leave everything at your feet singing adoration unto you. Come and take your place this day, we pray in Jesus' name. And I pray, Father, that every mouth that will sing your praise, that will worship you in songs and hymns this evening, may that mouth testify to your praise and glory in Jesus' name. May that mouth never confess sickness in Jesus' name. May that mouth never cry for sorrow in Jesus' name. Please, Father, let the host of heaven attend to us this day. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we take the opening hymn, we call on the person who will introduce that hymn, Mr. Bode Top to come and introduce the hymn. Thou whose almighty word by John Marriott, 1780 till 1825. John Marriott, M.A., son of E. Marriott, D.D., rector of Cotsback, Near Luther's Ward. Born at Cottesback in 1780 and educated at Rugby and Christ Church, Oxford. He was the second of two who obtained honors in the schools in 1802, the first year in which there was a public examination for honors at Oxford. He was also a student at Christ Church. And for about two years, a private tutor in the family of the Duke of Boxley. The Duke presented him to the rectory of Church Lawford, Warwickshire. This he retained to his death, although his wife's health compelled him to reside in Devonshire, where he was successively curate of St. Lawrence and other parishes in Exeter and Broxlight, near Exeter where he died March 31st, 1825. I enjoy you to sing this song, Lost Tilly.
Songs of Praise, the Angel Sang by James Montgomery. May I respectfully call Honorable Justice Ulushola from Konowusu to take the next reading. Songs of praise, the angels sang. James Montgomery, 1771 to 1854. James Montgomery, the son of Novarian parents, who died on a West Indian mission field while he was in boarding school. Montgomery inherited a strong religious bent a passion for missions, and an independent mind. He was editor of the Sheffield Iris, 1796 to 1827, a newspaper that sometimes espoused radical causes. Montgomery was in prison briefly when he printed a song that celebrated the fall of the Bastille, and again, when he described a riot in Sheffield that reflected unfavorably on the military commander. He, was, he also protested against slavery, the lot of boy chimney sweeps and lotteries. Associated with Christians of various persuasions, Montgomery supported missions and the British Bible Society. He published 11 volumes of poetry, mainly his own, and at least 400 hymns. Some critics judge his hymn texts to be equal in quality to those of Isaac Watts and Charles Wellesley. Many were published in Thomas Cotterell's Selection of Palms and Hymns, 1819 edition, and in Montgomery's own Songs of Zion, 1822. Christian Samis, 1825, and Original Hymns, 1853. Beloved, kindly join me in singing these songs of praise. Songs of praise, the angels sang.
my pleasure and delight to invite the president of uh, Igwebe College Old Boys Association, Mr. Olumuyua Kinoshi, to read the next commentary on Psalm 121. Mr. President. Thank you, sir. Senior Williams. Psalm 121. Psalm 121 is classified as a psalm of confidence meant to celebrate God's providential care and is the second psalm in the Songs of Ascent, 429, which begin with Psalm 120. This theme is carried through the four trophies and uses a poetic technique frequently employed in the Songs of Ascent called Anandisposite. The technique occurs when a word or phrase at the end of one line is picked up and used in the subsequent line, often near the front, 7.30. As the authors further explain, some interpreters refer to this literary device as a stair-step technique, the vocabulary connects each line as the reader moves through the psalm, 730, and connects the main theme over the course of the poetic movements. Psalm 121 opens with the confidence assertion that God will be his helper and lift up my eyes to the mountains. Tucker explains mountains has been interpreted negatively as a treacherous and dangerous path or the places at which false gods were worshipped or possibly as Zion or the eels surrounding Zion. When your world turns dark and your journey turns rugged, where do you go? You turn to help. What is your source? And for the confidence you need to face the headwind of life. Psalm 121 encourages all in such times. It reminds us where our help comes from and infuses us with confidence. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and, uh, and the earth. Beloved, please join me and others here in reading Psalm 121. This psalm will be chanted by um, the Lego City Choral. The program, it wasn't pointed. Um, the city choral will chant, but please stand and sing the Gloria with us.
as we daily lift our eyes to the Lord, he will continue to be our helper in the name of Jesus. Just after we have lifted our voices unto the Lord for help, it is only expedient that we become a testament of what he continues to do for us. And so I would invite, as we listen to the story behind, we have our gospel to proclaim, Mr. Ralph Osayame, to give the next reading. Possibly you give me another one. The one with me says that. Sorry. Okay. So we have a gospel to proclaim. It's by my co-moderator, Sir Yomi Williams. I have a gospel to proclaim by Edward Joseph Bonds. 1938. Written in 1968 for the Charlie Deanery of the Blackburn Diocese when Bones was vicar of St. Peter's Charlie. It was written for a call to mission and its dignified and central response to such an occasion during the call. There were four meetings, each one expounding the theme, incarnation, crucifixion, resurrection, Pentecost. Verses 2 to 5 record these subjects. The hymns was written to be sung to Fulda by William. This immensely useful hymn arose out of the author's involvement in the life of the Blackburn Diocese where he has served all his ministerial life. The bishop of the diocese made a call to mission to arouse the parishes to their responsibility in this field. The hymn was written for these meetings with the four points being taken up in turn in the four inner verses. It was immediately seized upon for wider use and has become something of a standard hymn in our books. The composer was a highly enthusiastic proponent of the works of the great classical German composers. He claimed that this tune was to be found in Beethoven somewhere. Though where, where, is a, where is a mystery, and despite many theories, it has not been found. It is probably best thought of as being by Gardner himself. Beloved, as you join me in singing this hymn tonight, let us put in mind that we have a gospel to spread the whole world as we sing verses 1 to 4 only. Thank you.
be seated by the permission of the vicar this experience that we explain that because of the messages of this the various verses of scripture we will have to sing everything as every of those stanzas have its own meaning to us as we reflect on those words it's my prayer this evening that those words will inspire us more in Jesus name so I call on mrs. Oluato in Akinde for the next hymn. I cannot tell why he whom angels worship by Reverend William Young Fullerton, United Kingdom, 1857 to 1932. Born at Belfast, Northern Ireland, he was raised Presbyterian, but became a Baptist preacher, administrator, and writer. When a young man, he was influenced by the preaching of evangelist Charles Spurgeon, who became his friend and mentor. He became pastor of the Melbourne Hall Baptist Church. Thousands of people came to Christ under his ministry he was tall, but very approachable and kind. Fullerton served as president of the Baptist Union and home secretary of the Baptist Missionary Society. He spoke frequently at Keswick conventions. He published works, including biographies of John Bunyan, Charles Spurgeon, James William Condell Fegan, and Frederick Brotherton Meyer. He also wrote missionary histories and devotionals. He compiled several hymnals as well. He died at Bedford Park, Middlesex. Let us sing all the four stanzas.
please listen to this as a solo. The scripture reading is taken from Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 to 17. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, 
singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of God. We're going to have a, a solo, the first solo of the evening, to be given to us by a gentleman, Nonso Ugu. Nonso? If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or song, if I can show somebody he is traveling. Then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not. If I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living shall not be in vain. If I can do my duty as a good man ought, if I can bring back beauty to a world of rot, if I can spread love's message as the master told, then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall. I can help somebody as I pass along, that my living shall not be. Say thanks for the things he has done for me. 
been so undeserved Yet you live to prove your love for me The voices of a million angels Cannot express my gratitude Oh Lord, I have all ever hope to be I give it all to you to God be the glory to God be the glory to God His blood, he has saved me. With his hands, he has raised me. To God be the glory for the things he has done. Just let me live my life. Let it be pleasing, Lord, to you. And do I feel any praise? Let it go to Calvary. With his hands, he has raised me. With his blood, he has saved me. To God be the glory. For the God of Bethel, by whose hands may I respectfully request Mr. Tunde Fashino to please read the commentary. O oh God of Bethel, by whose hands? By Doddridge Philip. Doddridge Philip, VD, was born in London on June 26, 1702. His grandfather was one of the ministers under the Commonwealth who were ejected in 1662. His father was a London oil man. He was offered by the Duchess of Bedford a university training for the nation in the Church of England, but declined it. He entered Mr. Jenny's Nonconformist Seminary at Kibworth instead, preached his first sermon at Hinckley, to which Mr. Jennings had moved his academy. In 1723, he was chosen pastor at Cape Wolf. In 1725, he changed his residence to Market Hubro, still ministering at Cape Wolf. 
the certain work of his life as a preceptor and divine began in 1729 with his appointment to the Castle Hill meeting at Northampton and continued till in the last stage of consumption. He sailed to Lisbon in 1751, where he died on October 26, the same year. He was presented with his DD degree by the University of Aberdeen. His fame as a divine combined with his wide sympathies and gentle unaffected goodness won for him the friendship of what? Colonel Gardner and Harvey and the esteem of Seeker and Warburton. He welcomed the work of Wesley and Whitefield and entertained the latter on his visit to Northampton. His rise and progress of religion in the soul and the family expositor who did good work in their day. After Dr. Douglas' death, it seems to have published by his friend, Job Orton, in 1755.
seated. We have a two-in-one aim by the same author now. And so, before I call on the person who will take it, I just want to brief us that the first hymn, All Things Are Possible to Him, will be sung seated, while the second hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, will be sung standing. And so, I have the pleasure to call on Mr. Ralph Osayame to come and take the next hymn. All things are possible to him, and love divine, all love excelling, who are written by the same author, Charles Wesley, 1707 to 1788. Charles Wesley M.A. was a great hymn writer of the Wesley family, perhaps taking quantity and quality into consideration, the great hymn writer of all ages. Charles Wesley was the youngest son and 18th child of Samuel and Susan Wesley and was born at Epworth Rectory, December 18, 1707. In 1716, he went to Westminster School, being provided with a home and board by his elder brother, Samuel. Then Osha had the school until 1721, when he was elected King Scholar, and as such received his board and education free. In 1726, Charles Wesley was elected to a Westminster studentship at Christ Church, Oxford, where he took his degree in 1729 and became a college tutor. In the early part of the same year, his religious impressions were much deepened, and he became one of the first band of Oxford Methodists. In 1735, he went with his brother John to Georgia, as secretary to George Ogilbert Thorpe, having before set out, received Dickens and priest orders on two successful Sundays. His stay in Georgia was very short. He returned to England in 1736, and in 1737 came under the influence of Court Zizendorf and the Moravians, especially of that remarkable man who has so large a share in molding John Wesley's career. Peter Bonner, and also of a Mr. Bray, a brazier in Little Britain. On which Sunday, 1737, he found rest to his soul, and in 1738, he became curate to his friend, Mr. Stonehouse, vicar of Islington. But the opposition of the church wardens was so great that the vicar consented that he should preach in his church no more. Henceforth, his work was identified with that of his brother John, and he became an indefatigable itinerant and field preacher. On April 8, 1749, he married Sarah Gibbon. His marriage, unlike that of his brother John, was a most happy one. His wife was accustomed to accompany him on his evangelistic journeys which were as frequent as ever until the year 1756, when he ceased to itinerate and nearly devoted himself to the care of the societies in London and Bristol. He died in London March 29, 1788, and was buried in Mer Maribyrn Churchyard. John May singing this song of praise. Thank you.
Ika has directed that the next song we sang seated. They tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord. It will be taken by Mrs. Mrs. Mopelola Ajayi. And then we have special numbers by voice of the great Igwebi College, the choir, and then Lagos City Choral in that order. Mopwe. Good evening. Uh, Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord by Timothy Dudley Smith. Timothy Dudley Smith, born 1926, educated at Pembroke College and Ridley Hall, Cambridge. Dudley Smith has served the Church of England since his ordination in 1950. He occupied a number of church positions, including parish priest in the Diocese of Southwark, 1953 to 1962, Archdeacon of Norwich, 1973 to 1981, the Bishop of Thetford, Norfolk, from 1981 until his retirement in 1992. He also edited a Christian magazine, Crusade, which was founded after Billy Graham's 1955 London Crusade. Dudley Smith began writing comic verse while a student in Cambridge. He did not begin to write hymns until the 1960s. Many of his several hundred hymn texts have been collected in Lift. Dudley Smith also served on various editorial committees, including the committee that published Psalm Praise 1973. Shall we all sing joyfully the four stanzas of this song?
the Gobi College boys are coming out to give us a special number. And immediately after the rendition, they will lead all the other old boys here in singing the, the first verse of the Gobi College school song.
And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the heavenly choir, in songs divine, was closed the sixth day. Just out of protocol, but cleared with the vicar, is the fact that all boys here present will gingerly march forward and join the choir as the choir leads them in the singing of one stanza of the school song. This is in honor of one of theirs.
Hallelujah. The Bible says if we have a thousand tongues, it will never be sufficient to pay for all the Lord has done. And so with a thanks song today, with the songs of thanksgiving, we will lift our voice to the one who was, who is, and is to come. I will help in ages past. Hallelujah. You've done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. Everybody say, not a killing more. Oh, you have done so much for me. Lord, I cannot tell it all. We say, not a more. Now listen to this. If I have a million tongues, Lord, I know it will never be enough. That's why we we'll say, not a more. If we have a million tongues, it will never be enough. Not a more. What shall we raise? Unto Jehovah, for he has done so very much for you. What shall you render unto King of glory? For he has done so very much. Okay, listen to this. Oluwa ti shola, enu wa kolero yi orere baba gbo kwewa ani wipe Jesus ti shola ele yi koja fenuro yi. Everybody say. Baba bo pewa tori wi pe baba ba le peru wa o se o o to lati so re re lori omo lori oko baba bo pewa ki la ba mu wa eh wa fu jehova Lori Ayewa, Baba Tewa, Baba 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 Tewa, Baba 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 Tewa, Baba 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 and if I have a million tons, it will never be sufficient. Not a killer, not a killer, more. For all your mercies, daily that you load us. We will never be able to thank you. Not a kele, not a 
I call on Sir Olutayo Gosoya to take the next hymn, and as he takes that next hymn, the Even Song Collection shall be taken afterwards. The Even Song Collection shall be taken afterwards. I bind unto myself today by St. Patrick 372 to 466. Patrick Saint, the second bishop and patron saint of Ireland, was the son of Caponus, a deacon, and grandson of Pontitus, a presbyter, and great grandson of Odysseus, a deacon, was born most probably near Dumbarton in North Britain in 372. According to the Epistle of Corotikos, the father was also a decurio, a member of the local town council and a Roman by descent, hence probably the name Patricius Saint. At the age of 16, he was carried off with many others to Highland and sold as a slave. There he remained six years with Meiko or Miliok. He was engaged in feeding cattle, Pecoria, though the later writer said that he was he fed swine in his captivity. He became acquainted with the Irish language. His misfortune was the means of leading him to Christ and he devoted himself to prayer, and often frequented for that purpose the woods of Mount Stemish. Having escaped after six years, he spent some years with his parents, and then was started off, when still a youth, to devote himself to the evangelization of Ireland. Patrick does not, in his own writings, allude to the external source when he obtained ordination, and as he speaks of his Roman descent, it would be strange for him not to have mentioned his Roman consecration, if it had been a fact. He was probably a bishop when he commenced his missionary labors in Ireland. There were, however, Christians in Ireland before that period. The date of St. Patrick's mission is not certain, 
but the internal evidence of his writing indicates that it was most probably about AD 425. The day amount, amount of his death, my 17, but not the year 466, is mentioned in the book of Amman. I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity by invocation of the name, the three in one and one in three. Let us sing the first four stanzas.
we'll move on to the next hymn, and the person to take that is Mrs. Toyin Obilano. I am the bread of life is a Christian hymn composed by Sister Susan Tullen in 1966, based on the bread of life discourse in John 6 and John 11. Susan Tullen was born in Lansing, Michigan on October 24, 1927. She joined the Sisters of Mercy in Bollingham, California in 1950 where she taught choral at Mercy High School. Tolan wrote the words to the hymn in 1964 during her time between classes. Tolan claims to have discarded the original copy, but was inspired by a student to keep it. She originally presented the hymn in its final form at a diocese music educators conference in 1966. The popularity of the hymn coincided with the use of vernacular languages following the Second Vatican Council, along with its use in the worship hymn now for the Catholic Church. The hymn also appears in the Episcopal Church, the hymn now 1982, and the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America's Evangelical Lutheran Worship. Let us sing, I am the bread of life.
body, soul, and spirit will resurrect. I'm praying for you. Your body, soul, and spirit will resurrect. Amen. So shall it be. Now, we call on the immediate family of the Mudashirus to come to the altar. Um, they dance from the back. You will stand here. Then friends and well-wishers will drop something into the um, bag. Then, after we have done that, the immediate family will come to the altar and we will pray for them. Do you understand me, please? The immediate family of Mudashiru will come from the back, stand here, and every one of us will drop our offerings. Immediately we finish that. Then we have the prayer, Thanksgiving prayer. The band, over to you. Blessed assurance Jesus is mine Oh, what a fountain Of glory divine There was salvation Oh, Jesus of Lord This is my story, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior, honor the Lord, this is my story, oh. Ah! 
Because you are God, because you are good, because you are wonderful, because you are dependable, we thank you mightily, Father, because you have been a tower of strength for this family and for friends of the departed in keeping, you have kept them. In raising of their heads, you have. You have been all things to everyone. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. A token of our love and appreciation we have brought. Father, accept this. Use them for the furtherance of your kingdom here on earth. And enable us to go on our way rejoicing in the fullness that you are always with us, even unto the end of the age. And so we ask that you continue to manifest in the lives of these children of yours, moving them higher and higher. You know the inner recesses of their hearts. Meet them at their point of need and enable them to move more nearly to you, to see you more clearly and to love you more dearly. Thank you, gracious Father, because we know you will do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ask for. 
because we have prayed through the merits of Jesus Christ our Lord. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Oluwa, Oluwa, Wa. Olorun, Olorun, Bi. Olowo, Bi, Bi, E, Ma, She. Bo, Du, Be, Se, Bo, Bi, O. Oluwa, 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 Wa. Olorun, Olorun, Bi. Olowo, Bi, Hallelujah. It's a wonderful evening, a beautiful evening when different types of music of the church, the songs of the church were being rendered. We give glory to God and we believe that angels and archangels and the heavenly host were with us as we heard the songs. God bless you all in Jesus' name. We appreciate um, the family of late Air Commodore Bola Homodashiru, a distinguished noble Nigerian of the Igbubi College students, 63 to 65. We want to say thank you to all for coming and we bless the name of the Lord for his widow. Mommy, God bless you. Bible is of Whenever you remember your husband, the spirit of the living God, we continue to minister unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to say thank you all for your patience. I want to recognize Papa Odubogun and Mama Odubogun, the former bishop of the Diocese of Ife. Papa and Mama, you are welcome. God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. It go be old college boys association. We appreciate you. God bless you in Jesus' name. It go be college 63 to 65 stock. And many are watching in diaspora. God bless you all in Jesus' name. We want to say thank you to Mr. and Mrs. Shegun Ogunlewe, Engineer and Mrs. Lighton on Olaja, Mr. and Mrs. Shegun Olusonya, all of our saviors. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Uh, Papa Archbishop Adebayo Dada Kinde is online watching. Papa, we appreciate you and we bless the name of the Lord for your life. May you continue to enjoy your retirement, you and mommy, the children and grandchildren, in the name of Jesus Christ. Our Savior's Church Choir, thank you very much. Igbubi College Choir, thank you very much. The Lagos City Choral, led by Mr. Nwokidi, you've done us proud. God bless you in Jesus' name. I want to appreciate the Chancellor of my home diocese and my uncle, Justice Mpunu Wusu. I think, okay, he has gone. May the Lord bless him. He is the Chancellor of the Diocese of Badagri. Mr. Body Thorpe has gone. He's from the cathedral. And Mr. Ralph Osayame, you are welcome. And do you know this man? Whatever his vicar tells him is carried. He made me to enjoy Church of the Resurrection for good. 11 years, 11 months. God bless you, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. Um, I want to recognize Parfashino. Parfashino and his wife, they are good people. Let me quickly tell you, they sent one good gift to me. Every color of stoles for Christmas, 
And those told, sir, they can match CM Army in America, what's in UK, and other places that they are making um, vestments. Please, greet mommy. We are grateful indeed. They have been so good to me. God bless you, sir. It is well with you and your family members in Jesus' name. My choir, thank you very much. I love you. We've been here since 7 o'clock. Thank you very, very much. God bless you in Jesus' name. My priests, <laughs> do you know what? After 7 o'clock, 9 o'clock, Modi went for condolence visit. Myself and himself, we have to go to um, Vault and Gardens in Ekoyi to pray, to remember one of our old members. So, here we are again, and something is happening in my house now. I just have to leave them to eat since it is a good thing and come to this. God bless you. We are grateful. Reverend Modi, Reverend Oshinukwebi, God bless you in Jesus' name. And for every member of our saviors, God bless you. And every person present here, we say thank you. Come back to our saviors. This is your church. <laughs> Hallelujah. The boys of Igobi College, we love you. You sang well. You are beautiful. I mean, you are handsome guys. Thank you very much. God bless you. Those are the media, the band, um, the sextines, those who kept the church clean, the paparazzi here and there. We appreciate you. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Before we go, it remains one song. But before we go, we have something at the west door. They've packed Urishi Rishi there for item seven. So make sure you take yours before you go. So, thank you very much. God bless you. Our saviors, as I've said, is your church. Every day, 7.15 a.m. service, and um, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 12 noon, we are online. You can see us online. Anytime, any day, we are there. God bless you in Jesus' name. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of this uh, singing session. May I call on Ruti Miyakindi to take the final commentary. I, the Lord of sea and sky, Badan Scotu. Timmy. Last hymn, I, the Lord of sea and sky, by Dan Schott. Dan Schott wrote this song in 1981. It is based on the message found in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8, and 1 Samuel chapter 3. In Isaiah, we see the Lord God Almighty asking whom he shall send, and Isaiah responding positively to God's call. In his response, Isaiah says, Here I am, send me. Regardless of whether we are Protestants or Catholics, Jesus is calling us, and we need to respond to God's call. It is a call for service, a call for spreading the word and love of God to the people around us. No wonder this is a song that young and old have fallen in love with. Surveys have shown that this is the second most loved song in the United Methodist Church, especially among the youth, which is understandable when you consider that surrender is a big tenet of the Christian faith. I remember as a young man long ago wondering if I had fully submitted my will to the Lord to be used of him. 
It is only when we full surrender to him that we enjoy the peace that only Christ can provide. This is a tough ask in a world of individualism. Let us rise and sing this song together. Before we rise, I have a brother here. Reverend Abiodun Ikpimoye. <laughs> we were together at um, St. Michael's Ojo and Ojo Agdikinri. I was his uncle's Papa Ikpimoye, late Papa Ikpimoye. I was his curate then. And this young man then, well, you are welcome. Please greet your wife and the children in Jesus' name. Thank you. We recognize the president of I Koba. Please, Baba, I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> you are welcome and God bless. Ojo ya dale jubai lo. Alafia kwipe lula mafijin kinyi. We appreciate you, sir. God bless you, sir. Then we can now rise and take the last hymn.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Let us thank God for being part of this beautiful evening. Let us ask that as we go out from this sanctuary, the Lord will go ahead of us and perfect all that, all that pertain to us. Let the Lord know what is your deepest, innermost desire of your heart. Because he's here. Let's bring our prayers to a close. Father, we know that you answer all prayers in accord with your will. Grant unto your children in excess of their asking. Tonight, from the children of light, banish all forms of darkness. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the throne of grace, be all honor, glory, dominion, and power, now and forevermore.